I get a lot of DMs. Gary, I want to be good with girls. I'm like, I'm like, yes, like every young dude. I'm like, yes, the, yeah. <laughs> the answer is practice getting said no to. Nothing good's gonna happen if you don't ask. But like, you have to get used to rejection. And like, everyone's so scared of having girls say, fuck you, you're corny. They think like that's gonna ruin their lives when in reality, that's the beginning of them being on the track in the other direction. It's just a subjective opinion. Yeah. Somebody just doesn't find you attractive or doesn't think you're cool. Like, oh, hey, like you didn't ask out every girl. Gotta do shit that makes you uncomfortable. Like, take L's. Take L's. Yeah. Gang. Hi. Hi. What's good? Hi. I'm just grinning. Good. I'm very flattered. How are you? Doing nice well. Nice to meet you all. You, you cool. also. One thing that you had, had said that I had seen, um, you, you inspired me in, in the last two years, really, is just get off my horse. And I, I teach filmmaking and TV production, but I wasn't doing it myself. Love. And, uh, Become and so, a practitioner. Absolutely. So this, this past huge. year, I bought a camera and I've been, I've been working with it. And it's it. going to help them. It's, it's going to make you so much better. Absolutely. So I'm working with former students right now and uh, I've kind of got a group of people together and we're just we're making movies this summer. Love. But, but one thing that you really <clears throat> said was um, like, don't have a plan B. Like, why have a plan B? Because then you won't follow plan A. And I, I try to, to talk to them about that all the time. Well, especially, you know, for you and I, practicality grows as you get older, you have responsibilities. When you're this age, it really doesn't even make sense to do the things that we grew up thinking we should tell our kids. Like, it actually doesn't make sense, if you think about it, to not try to do the most high risk thing in your 20s. Mm -hmm. That's the time where they could all, literally, they're of the age where you could like all live together in one tiny place Right? Yep. You have no rent in that scenario. This is the age where you can eat horrible food for like two bucks and like your body's like cool, no problem. Like <laughs> this is the age when you, like it's been a big big passion of mine which is like we have to get out of this like oh now you're 22, mm-hmm. you're a big boy now and you should have a job. 22 to 30 should be when people take the biggest risks of their lives. They're not affecting anybody else. Right. right. My son is the dude that he's he's almost thirty, and um, he studied. He had two degree in music and environmental study. Yes. The EPA like closed down when he graduated two thousand fifteen. And yes. For me, when they look for a job and say he was overqualified, so yeah. he didn't get the job. He was very upset. Yeah. So for a full year he did nothing. He just yes. stayed home and just yes. he's here. And he said thank you for at least giving me roof. Of course, of course. Stuff. Then he went to volunteer at Nose the marching band stuff. Then yes. He did EMT for like five years volunteering. Yes. So he was not bringing any money. Yes. But he was happy enough. So now he decided he worked at the hospital as a script. Yes. And he's learning so much medical things. So he plans cool. to go as a PA. But Good in for the him. meantime, he he is he saves every penny. He goes out and he always said, "Mommy made the best food, so why should I buy something that doesn't taste as good?" So, so he's he's home now, and, nice. and we're happy. So my daughter, she was she worked at UConn and she was in New York during yes. the pandemic. So yes. she moved back home. She started. Saving. So you're you're the so happiest lady in the my world. My kids are home now, and they're saving money. Love it. So you notice I said that on stage. I think yeah. about that a lot. Mm-hmm. Some people are lucky where they love their parents, and their parents love yeah. having them, and like, cool. As long as you're, not, it's all judgment. Yeah. You guys know you're in the thick of it at this age, like it's all judgment. Judgment from your parents, teachers, your yeah. friends, all you're thinking about, like members. you don't even realize you're thinking about it. All you're really thinking about is what people are thinking about you, like it's just real. And you know, building that strength to get to a place of like, wait a minute, what do I think? Not to posture, not to impress anybody but myself. And so that's hard, that's a journey. But yeah, I, I think the risk, like especially film, like this is, 20 to 30 is when you do go to LA and you know make five bucks an hour or 20 bucks an hour and in California 20 bucks an hour and wait tables and like fucking fight fight DM every producer DM every studio DM every like just fight for it yeah because you can because then you get married often then you have children you start worrying about other things but you said too like social media I mean, you all know how to use it, and this opportunity is is right there for them. Why aren't making content and just getting it out there? You're one one video away. Yeah. But the other thing is where kids get, where it gets daunting is every other kid knows how to do it too. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Gary, there's too much competition. I'm like, then you shouldn't win. Right. Right. Like, I love when people are like, Gary, there's too much people posting. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. Like, like that's how life works. Like, (laughs) if you're not good enough and you're not good at making movies, you're not gonna make movies. Right. But not trying to, 
then you're then you're four, that's right. Then you're 47 working some job, mm-hmm. thinking back to when you were 20, and be like, why the fuck didn't I go for yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Regret. That's what I talked a lot about. Yeah. Can I ask you something yeah. just on on that idea of fear and the judgment and all that? Because you mentioned on stage that is a difficult thing to do. Because you're constantly thinking about what the others are saying, even though they're on the sidelines. They're not playing the game. You're still in. Well, that. Sometimes that other is your brother that you looked up to. Sometimes that other is your mom who you fucking who like came to the country and did everything for. Like sometimes that other is like somebody you really right, fuck right. with and love. Yeah. But you still can't do it. So how do you how do you get to a place where and you talked about like emotional and mental practice? How do you get to a place where you can start cultivating practice the things to, to practice. stop the fear? practice? Uh, I'll give you an example. In in her scenario, my scenario too. My mom is my like I love her. She's like I don't want to disappoint her. I'm like okay. Do something right now that will disappoint her. Not like <laughs> something crazy. <laughs> don't go murder someone. <laughs> I'm talking like like. If your mom's like, like you got to either go talk to her or do something. You got to practice feeling it. If you're, this is why I'm scared of A students. If you're an A student your whole life, like you fear a B. Yeah. Right. Commit suicide to these kids. It's it's re- because we're not yeah. having the right conversations. This is why I'm motivated. Like as if a B. Fuck. I wish I got a B. I was in high school. I was ranked two forty three out of two fifty four. <laughs> Like, Straight F student. D, I was a D. I was a D student. D. Mm-hmm. Like I got A's in gym. The only four A's I got in high school were gym. All right. I don't think we have D's. At we do. We don't. <laughs> we don't. Yeah, it's it's A B C F. That's it. We don't have D's. No. Yeah. We don't even have yeah. Not even Still. kidding. It's ridiculous. And nobody gets F's. Well, right. yeah. somebody does. People. Oh, some yeah. people. Nice. Yeah. Somebody. Very good. <laughs> then yeah. we can't give a lower than a fifty. Yeah. I got like a 21 in German yeah. my freshman year. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great thesis that German was similar to Russian and I thought it would be easy for me. I walked in first day, I'm like, I'm fucking dead. <laughs> I get a lot of DMs. Gary, I want to be good with girls. I'm like, I'm like, yes, like every young dude. I'm like, yes, yeah. the, <laughs> the answer is practice getting said no to. Okay. Like, you, you're, like you're not, nothing good's gonna happen if you don't ask. Yeah. But like, you have to get used to rejection. Right. And like everyone's so scared of having girls say, fuck you, you're corny. Yeah. They think like that's gonna ruin their lives when in reality, that's the beginning of them on being on the track in the other direction. Right. You know, like it's just a subjective opinion. That's Somebody it. just doesn't find you attractive or doesn't think yeah. you're cool. Like, oh hey, like you didn't ask out every girl. There's you didn't like think I- the There's world. like eight billion people, <laughs> 100%, but you gotta practice. We, we've really, really, really tried to make it like less scary, and reality, I think we have to make it more scary. More scary. Yeah. yeah, you know, get in there. Just have to get practice to be uncomfortable. You know, like, you know, like, and it's funny. Think about what parents, especially immigrant parents, do with kids. They took big risks, so they want to make it safer for their kid, right? right? right. You left the country. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. We went all through those huge risks. You know how many people didn't leave Russia when they could, when my family did? They're afraid. Even though they know the Soviet Union sucked, like going to America and being dead, dead poor and not having the government help you a little bit, even though it was a fucked up government, was too scary for some, and they fucking regretted their whole life. Because all the people that came in the 70s, by the time Russia opened up in the late 90s, mm-hmm. they all came to America. Everybody else was 15, 20 years ahead of them and they were starting out like, you know, like, you just gotta get, you gotta start practicing to have micro losing. Gotta do shit that makes you uncomfortable. Like, take L's, take L's, take L's. That's, you know, I was even saying in the car over here, like, even with sports now, kids are now like picking one sport by like third grade. The one they're good at. Right. Like, when I was coming up, like, yeah, the best think. yeah, the best player in football yeah. in our team, but all he also played basketball and and baseball and he was okay at basketball and like bad at baseball, but like he got but that helped him like understand, yeah, I'm good at this and not good at this. Now everyone's like it's just yeah. like I feel like, yeah, that's like a mistake. Yeah. 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 It's good. I like uh, doing different ones. Yeah. Right, and that all those the fact that you did five helped you. It helped you, first of all, just actually physically, like doing different Big sports make you more at different muscles, but it also helped you mentally to understand like you weren't equally as good at all five. Yeah. Just impossible. And that's good. Yeah. We don't right. do enough of that. The other thing is like for you with them and, and students, like when you, like if teachers more often said, hey, this video is really bad, <laughs> but that's just my opinion. Mm. That's like a whole different thing than being like half pregnant with the candor. Like yeah. instead of like, yeah, you did some good things here, you know what I mean? Right. 
I think this stinks. I could be wrong. Put it out on Vimeo and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Oh, four people watched it? Seems like it stunk. <laughs> like, that's good. That's good, but we're like, you know? Yeah. Merit. Um, how do you go about, you know, you're, you always talk about candor, right? Yeah. How do you go about like explaining that to like your parents, you know? Like, cause they- Asking them to do it or you doing it or giving them candor? The, Cause you said, you know, the kind candor. Yeah, your parents don't deliver kind candor? It's like, like they, they try to, but a lot of times, like e- even with each other, yeah. um, they always, you know, get into fights because yeah. they have sort of candor. Yeah. They don't understand that kind of candor that you always talk about. And that really resonated with me when you talked about it. You know, one thing kids can do more often is have grown up conversations with their parents. Mm-hmm. If you, here's where people get caught. They come in hot. Mm-hmm. You only really talk when you're hot. Yeah. When, right? When they, fr- when you got pissed at the way they just did something, now you're like, Da-da-da. like it's all heat. That's why the world's on tilt. Everyone just isolate themselves. It just yeah, everybody them. just either goes to the room and shuts down mm-hmm. or pushes back with equal venom. Right. To me, right? Right, well, my son will watch TV together and discuss the French shows and like Trent and stuff. And he's my like a TV partner. Yeah. Because we, other things will come up during the That's right. show. That's, show. That's, That's right. Totally unrelated, but something he was thinking about. To that point, she's in an environment with him where it's neutral, it's not hot. So I always say, whenever you want to talk about the thing that's most bothering you with someone, do it at a time where you're least upset about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So cool, tonight we met, we literally talked about this, and tonight some shit goes down. Wait six days when you're feeling better, yeah. and it'd be like, mom, dad, or mom, or dad, can you watch this video with me? It's something I want to talk about. I'm a little scared to talk to you about it, but watch this. That's a video about Khan Candor or whatever, right? Yeah. If you can talk to people when you're less on tilt, if you're bring, you know, kids don't think that they're the ones that needs to bring the mature energy because they're like, yo, you're fucking mom and dad, you should be doing this. But if, but if their mom and dad didn't do it for them, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. kids should be more upset with their grandparents than their parents. Right. <laughs> I just wish that became bro, a bigger, yeah, nice. bro, when I tell you if kids in the world started to be more upset with their grandparents than their parents, the world would be in a better place. Mm-hmm. I don't mean be upset with your grandparents, I mean be empathetic to why your parents are like that. Right. right. If your grandma's nasty, and she was your mom's mom, give your mom, give your mom a little break. But we don't do that. Even when the mom might be half, half as bad, we're still mad because it's our mom. And we're worried about us. So if we, back to empathy and compassion above you, if you can go and talk to them about like, hey, this is something I feel in our family. If everyone's in a good mood, when it starts, they may be, everyone's gonna be defensive. Promise. You poke at someone's thing, they're gonna be like, nah. They'll push, but they're not gonna be like full tilt as if you were coming at them with your, if you're in a good place, you can have that combo. And it's never a bad time, even at this young of an age, to start practicing that shit. And especially like with, with money and how, how you know how t- times are with inflation. Of course. And, you know, if parents are stressed parents about, are money, about money, of course. Right? And it's just, it's hard because money is a very like, of course, talk, when parents right? are ta- when parents are struggling with money, there's so many things you can do in that environment though. First, you can always go to accountability. Mm-hmm. What am I making my parents spend money on that I don't need? Mm-hmm. That becomes an, but that's hard. Especially if you, like especially when families go down in money, like you were used to some shit, but you're not. Mm-hmm. But like, every time you can practice doing good things, it's gonna service you well. Mm-hmm. So even if you don't want to stop getting X, Y, and Z that your parents are paying for, and you're like, yo, I can, can you imagine, how old are you? I'm 17. A 17 year old son coming to parents and say, hey, you got two seconds? Mom, dad, I can sense like there's some anxiety in the system. You know, you know how I get 50 bucks for this, or you know how you're doing this, or you know, like, I, and again, I don't know everybody's situation. Some kids have nothing that their parents pay for. Others have something and everything in between. But if there's one thing that can save your parents 20 bucks in a month, it's not about the 20 bucks, it's about a 17 year old coming to the table and saying, yo, I wanna contribute to this moment. Especially if the fighting is bothering you, you'd be stunned how much that will hit. That's why I love the garage sale stuff so much. 
I wrote that down. I don't bro, watch the garage sale stuff, but I've... It's so, bro, when I tell you, in New Jersey especially, Jersey's one of the best states because so many towns have town-wide garage sales mm-hmm. where the whole town does it. Really, you did? You went to garages, found some stuff, and just oh, yeah. resold? It was my whole life. Yeah, sure. When I was a teenager, my parents gave me no money right. after I was about 10. Right. I wanted shit. Like when Sega Genesis came in, I was like, yeah. yo, I need that shit. <laughs> you know, and so, you know, just, this goes back to like, what I tell parents is like, you want your kids to be hungry? You want your kids to be capable? Don't feed them. Right. They'll figure out how to feed themselves. Right, right. You know, and like, if your mom and dad are giving you a hundred bucks every month and like, that's all you need, you're, what, are you, what are you gonna go do? Nothing. But if your mom and dad give you nothing and you need 80 bucks to like, do two things a month or something, like, you're gonna figure out how to get it. Yeah. And like figuring out how to get it is an incredible skill. And the one that I most see that needs nothing, 20 bucks, a little bit of gas, and a little bit of money, $10 for the garage sales, Mm -hmm. there's nothing I've seen where you can go buy $10 worth of comic books, stuffed animals, video games, come home, list it on eBay, and make 130 bucks in a week. There's nothing, and that's every time if you get educated. Like every time. How would you uh, find those garage sales? Because I know, like, Google. Obviously. Google. <laughs> <laughs> New Jersey, town-wide. No, but it's funny. A lot of people ask it, and you know, it's funny. When you're not in that mind, yeah, it sounds yeah. funny when I say it, right. but I get it. Mm-hmm. There's a hundred apps, garage sailor, garage sale find. There's a hundred apps, but go- what I do every time, New Jersey, town-wide, garage sale, April 24th, enter. Randolph had last week, and Denville has again. Um, do you ever do like lake. the, you know, the stories wars? Of course. Yeah, you do that thing? That's harder. Like, they're good in theory, but what, I, like to me, first of all, they cost more. Like, I'm always thinking about the person that got 20 bucks. Yeah, yeah. People can graduate at the storage. Where people, where people go is they go from garage selling to thrift stores, like Goodwill and all that. Then they go, then they start going to storage wars, uh, storages, then usually they go into drop shipping and retail arbitrage on Amazon. Mm-hmm. But like, man, I got thousands of emails, thousands of emails of like, I had 16 bucks, mm-hmm. and now I have 6,000. Oh. The most fun part is it's, for certain people, it's fun. Yeah. It's like you wake up on Saturday, go with your boy, like, what the fuck are you doing at 7 a.m. on Saturday anyway, just sleeping in? It's like, like gambling. Yeah, it's like, it's, it is like, it's, it's a, a you're right. It's, a, it's funny you say that, that's right. It's the thrill of the hunt. Yeah. You roll up, and then, and then what's most fun is like, almost every weekend, if you go to 20, 30 of them, there's that one big come up. Yeah. You know, like, a big box of Legos for five bucks, you bring it home, they're minifigures, you look up at the first one, it's 20 bucks by itself, you still got a big bag of them, you're like, holy. <laughs> people don't realize how big it is. Yeah. And here's my favorite part, it teaches people shit. Right. It teaches you discipline, it teaches you creativity, you gotta figure out how to list it, what's the picture look like, mm-hmm. like work ethic, like cool, you're pumped when you sold something that you bought for two bucks for eight bucks, but now you gotta pack it, you gotta get it to the post office, now, you know, now you're off the high, mm-hmm. and it's Wednesday, and you gotta ship that shit to Kansas, you're like damn, I gotta pack, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gets people out of like, bullshit. <laughs> Okay, we gotta get gotta go. Photos, quick, yeah, got it. Anybody want a quick photo? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Absolutely.